when it comes to premium blue chip investing, Canadian National Railway has to be one of those companies whose stocks can make a very stable part of your investment portfolio. In fact, when you are looking to inflation-proof your investments, CNR may be the ride you want to book. In today's video, we will board this train and deep dive into their investment potential, and that train departs right now. Before we pull out of the station, I do want to be fully transparent in saying that I have had three family members work for the CNR. Two of my uncles were engineers, and a third uncle was a yard master. Obviously, this does create a wee bit of a bias, so keep that in mind as I try to remain unbiasedly objective with my opinions on the CNR. The Canadian National Railway is Canada's largest railway and has been in operation since 1919. They were the result of the government taking control over the Canadian Northern Railway and adding it to the Canadian Government Railway. And they would later, in 1919, add the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway, which expanded the CNR into a true coast-to-coast -coast rail system. A backbone for the Canadian supply chain. In addition to coast to coast, Canadian National Railway has also purchased some key American lines to give them access to the Gulf of Mexico. CNR was a Canadian crown corporation for most of its existence and only privatized in 1995. At that time, they were the biggest Canadian IPO in history. In terms of size, the CNR has about 20,400 miles of track and more than 25,000 employees. Interestingly enough, their biggest shareholder is Bill Gates, who holds 14.2% of the railway through two of his investment avenues. Their unmistakable red logo, which is nicknamed the Worm, has only been in use since 1960. The reason they did not add the R to it is because the CNR in Quebec is just CN. Compagnie des Chemins de Fer National du Canada. For my French viewers, please let me know in the comments how badly I spoke my French. I am not one for pronunciation when it comes to French. When we look at the railway as a part of the Canadian supply chain backbone, one of the first things you have to take into account is that transporting goods via rail is absolutely the most efficient economical way to transport goods. A train car can move roughly 95 tons over 2,200 kilometers for approximately $8,570. A truck can move 24 tons over that same distance for $6,622. However, to move 95 tons by truck, you need four of them. Thus, it would cost $26,488. Holy banana bread. That's quite a difference. I am sure I do not have to show you how much more it would be to try and fly 95 tons. So why is that important? Well, when you are looking for stability against inflation or recession, you want to look at companies that have an advantage. And I would say cost-wise, rail is absolutely where it is at in Canada. This advantage makes CNR recession-proof, and that is why it is ideal as a blue-chip foundation stock. The one argument that could come up is, well, what about CP Rail? Didn't CNR lose the Kansas City deal to them? The Kansas City Southern deal would have been amazing for CNR as it would have provided them access to Mexico. In regard to the deal, CNR was the largest bidder as they offered to buy KCS for $29 billion. And it was a deal that almost happened until US regulators struck it down over antitrust concerns. The next highest bid was Canadian Pacific and they were thus successful with a $25 billion bid. The failure of the KCS bid is not remotely a reflection on CNR, but rather a feather in the cap of CP. Interestingly enough, CNR's stock price actually rose when they lost that deal. CP Rail is Canada's second largest railway, and they have a record of some impressive growth, which is fantastic, as the Canadian market does have room for both of them. At first glance, CP Rail is looking like it is ready to dethrone CNR as the best investment choice for Canadian investors. CP has a lower PE ratio and a lower dividend payout ratio, which leaves them more revenue for growth. This is good, and by no means is CP a poor investment choice. Where CNR comes ahead is their history of stability, their higher dividend yield, and of course, they are also a dividend aristocrat. 
CNR has been increasing their dividend every year for the last 26 years. Now, in all fairness, CP is also a dividend aristocrat, but they are nowhere near 26 years consecutive of raising their dividend. Another aspect of CNR that is a huge competition advantage is their northern lines and their involvement in transporting Canada's minerals and resources. CNR is the leading mover of aluminum, iron ore, and base metal ore in North America. Freight revenue makes up approximately 95% of their revenue. In fact, over the last 12 years, CNR has grown their North American share of the market from 10.9% in 2010 to 15% in 2022. Let's take a look at some of their numbers. First off, they are a large cap company with a market cap of $95.1 billion. Their ticker is, well, of course, CNR, and at the time of recording, their share price was listed at $156.87. This is pretty high, but no worries if you use Wealthsimple as they are eligible for fractional investing. If you do not yet have Wealthsimple, check out my pinned comment for a link to grab two free stocks as you sign up for Canada's favorite commission-free broker. Okay, they have an S&P credit rating of A, which is not too bad. Their debt to equity ratio is 0.678, which is also pretty darn good. This means their equity is larger than their liabilities. Their price to earnings ratio is 22.90, and they have an earnings per share of 6.90. So what about their dividends though? They do have a dividend yield of 1.868%, and that is paid out quarterly in the amount of 73.3 cents per share. As I mentioned earlier, this dividend has been increased every year for the last 26 years. In fact, in 2021, it was 61.5 cents per share. So in 2022, they increased it a whole 19%. That is what I like in a dividend aristocrat, a nice increase instead of the minimum to keep their title. Compared to some of the higher yields we have seen on this channel, it does not look too great. But with CNR, they are also a growth stock. In the last year, their price has rose from $132.77 to $156.87 for a return of investment of 18.15%. If you add in their dividend, your total return for the last year would be 20%. I would challenge you to find a dividend stock with a 20% return that brings the insane level of stability you get with CNR. If we look bigger picture, over the last five years, the stock price of CNR rose from $101.27 to $156.87 for a five-year ROI of 55.89% and a total return just over 57%. And just for the fun of math, on the 10-year, they went from $41.41 to $156.87 for an ROI of 278.8%. Wow! CNR's major involvement with Canada's mineral production industry alone will lead to a crazy amount of stability, despite inflation or a recession. Their key strategy of a low incremental cost over the longer term is only going to benefit their customers and keep them a major player in the North American railway market for a very, very long time. I cannot tell you to buy this stock as I am not a financial advisor, but I can tell you this one is worth researching the banana bread out of. Then, if you agree with my assessment, take it to your financial advisor as they are the end of this process. If you guys loved this video, be excited. There is way more to come. Until then, why not watch one of these videos? And before you jump into that content, just be sure to like and subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you in the next video.